Okay, so data inside of a component has to be defined as a function that returns an object. So inside of my app component here, <clears throat> right between uh, my list of components and my methods, um, <clears throat> I'm going to add a new property that will return the object that represents the data. And so that looks like so. <clears throat> okay. And so this is going to be a function that will return an object. And I can actually use some ES2015 syntax to simplify this to be simply uh, data, like so, okay, um, and there we are. So inside of here, I can return an object, like so. So I'll go ahead and do return object, okay? And that object will initialize my data, and this will be the starting state for the component. So I have to think about what different properties my data will contain. I definitely know I need to have a list of videos because that is what I'm uh, retrieving from my uh, on-term change here. Uh, my on-term on, uh, on change uh, function here on line 24. All right, so I'm gonna add a property to my data object called simply uh, videos. So let's say videos. And what I'm doing here is, uh, this is gonna be an array of objects where every object represents one video, and I'm going to initialize this to be an empty array. And so now, down inside my on-term change here, um, where I have the dot then uh, statement on line 34, um, where it's waiting for the response uh, from the YouTube API, and I can replace the console log with some logic that will take the list of videos contained inside this response and update my data property, uh, specifically the videos property with that new list of videos. And so this response object that I'm console logging out has a data property inside of it. Let me see if I can actually show this to you. Uh, let's see if I do. Oh, I don't know, like do something like that. There we go, okay. And so there you see that data property, okay? And so I just want you to be able to see that uh, so you can visualize what I'm talking about here and, and understand it. And when you're putting a similar project together, you can always console log that response object and you're looking for this data property here, okay? And then, um, so let's see. So we have inside the data property, the list of items, and then that list of items is a list of the actual uh, videos uh, that I just found, right? Okay, um, so to capture that list of videos and assign them to my videos piece of data here, I need to replace that console log statement and put a set of curly braces in there. And so what I'm gonna do is replace that whole thing, set of curly braces, I'm going to do this dot videos uh, set that equal to response dot data dot items. Okay, and so the data property here uh, is not related to my component instance. It's the data property tied to my response object. Okay, it's tied to this response object that uh, comes back from the, from YouTube or the YouTube API. And on that uh, data property uh, is the list of videos that is contained within uh, items right here. So now anytime I make a request, I will get back a response, okay? Take a list of videos that, I, that were found and update the data piece of state, or sorry, yeah, update the data piece of the videos and then inside of my component instance. So anytime I update data tied to a component, I don't have to write out uh, this dot data dot videos. I can just write out this uh, and the data property, in this case videos, uh, that I'm trying to update. So when this line of code on 35 gets ex executed, um, uh, it'll cause the entire template inside the app component to automatically uh, render. 
Uh, so to ensure that everything is working correctly, I want to add in a counter inside of my template um, up here um, so that uh, I can count the number or the application will count the number of videos found on the YouTube API. So to do so, I'm going to add some space underneath of here. Uh, and I'm going to create two sets of curly braces, like so. Uh, and then inside of those curly braces, I can put some limited amount of JavaScript code to do a quick calculation. Usually I would use a computed function to do this, but because this is a temporary thing, I won't bother with making a computed function. Inside of the curly braces, I will simply just do videos, oops, videos dot length, like so. Okay, and save that. All right, and so that is going to be the videos tied to the data property um, down here and print it out. So when referencing a data property or a function that is tied to the component from within the template, I do not have to prefix it with this. I don't have to do this.videos.length. Um, I can just do videos.length. Just write out the name of the property that I'm trying to reference. All right, so this is saved. I'm gonna go back to my browser and let me try refreshing it. There we go. And now you can see in the browser that I have zero appearing uh, on the screen. But if I were to type something like so, now you see uh, I have uh, five printed out here, which indicates that I just found five videos. So not only am I taking a list of videos and assigning it to the uh, data property down here uh, on my component, but I can easily see that anytime I update that data property, it causes the component template uh, to automatically re-render and update the content that we see on the screen. So now that I have the list of videos stored on data, I can move on to the next step, which is to ensure that I take the list of videos on data and pass it down to the video list component to be rendered out as a list. And I will take care of that in a subsequent video, so stay tuned.